And welcome back to yet another hydroponic video as Benji runs past. What are you doing, Benji? Anyway, if you have not seen any of my videos before, for the last sort of year or so, we've been mucking around with hydroponics, aquaponics, all sorts of wonderful stuff, growing lots of food at home. Yes, and lots of issues, obviously, if you've never done any of this before, you'll figure it out as you go and realize it's not as easy as it seems. So we are progressing, we are getting better, obviously, than what we were. If we were getting any worse, it wouldn't even be much point making a video on it. Or would there? <laughs> Probably would, because that would be highly entertaining. But this is my Beto bucket system, which is a Dutch bucket system. And all that means is water drips through into these little buckety things, and there is a false bottom. Well, a lifted up area, I suppose you could say. So the water stays in the bottom of this, and as the water drips in, as you can see there, if we can focus, there we are, we're kind of focusing. Water drips in there and then it goes, overflows into this pipe and then goes all the way down in there and then into that black tub. And there's a pump in that black tub, which is pumping the water through that little pipe there and then back into the buckets. It's that easy. Now you can have the pumps on timers, you can have them on and off, whatever you want. Some people have them on for 15 minutes, off for 15 minutes. Yeah, some people have them on all the time. And we have had solar pumps going with them going like in the daytime and then off at night because obviously there's no sun at night. Okay, now that we've got all that out the way, the main issues we've had with pests are little tiny microscopic mites. This time of year, which is kind of freezing, kind of cold, Okay, it's not that freezing, not that cold because we live in the subtropics, but 20 degrees Celsius in the daytime, down to like 15 at night, and it's gonna get a little bit colder than that. Mites don't like that temperature, so they're more, seem to be around sort of spring, summer, and that. So hopefully, no more mites. The other issue we had was rats and mice, and you would think, just put traps down. Yeah, it's not that easy because these tomato plants are about three weeks old, and they're just starting to get their flowers, which means that you're potentially going to have tomatoes. And yeah, once you get the tomato and the tomato starts to form and then it starts to go red, overnight, they're all gonna get eaten by rats or mice, which is what happened to our last batch of tomatoes. So this is like the third batch and I've got two different species in here. I've got Roma tomatoes, which are these bigger ones and the smaller ones are pot prize. Yeah, they were only just planted a week between each other, so that's why the smaller ones are smaller. Now, these are going to grow. Another issue I had too was, this was the original roof, like that roof there was down here, and these tomato plants hit the roof after about three or four weeks, maybe four or five weeks, and then started bending up the side. Yeah, so we've extended the roof, so there's a good four foot of area above the actual pot which should be enough for those plants to actually grow to the top without getting pushed and bent down. Because if you cut the top of most tomato plants, they don't like that. And that is generally the end of the plant, depending on the species, well, subspecies, I should say. But, okay, going through all of that, the last issue we had, and if we check out some of the leaves, uh, let's go over here. See that leaf there, how it looks variegated? Okay, that was a mineral deficiency in our hydroponic solution. And the main reason for that is, apparently, according to a member, there was not enough nitrogen now that they're actually growing budding flowers and that. So I haven't had that problem before with my hydroponic solution. So what I think has happened is because I've raised this roof and we've had a lot of rain in the last month or so, is a lot of it's hit the pots and it's diluted my hydroponic solution. That's the only thing I can think of because, yeah, we're using a decent solution, we're checking it. I'm not actually testing for every single thing because, yeah, we're not that pedantic. One day we might go crazy and, you know, test nitrogen and test phosphate and test everything in the water just for the fun of it. But all we're doing is really adjusting pH and adding hydroponic solution and checking the conductivity. That is it. If you don't know anything about that, there's heaps of videos about that. I haven't really done a video about that because there's heaps of videos about that, but it's pretty easy to do. Yeah, so that is where we are now. So this is, I think, what, the third lot of tomatoes? 
So, so far so good. So these leaves, the new leaves are starting to look a lot better. So I think just changing the hydroponic solution was the easy way of doing it. Obviously you can add nitrogen and all sorts of fertilizers to it as well, but if you add too much, you're going to completely fry them. Now, one other thing I was gonna do with this system, because I had the extra area up the top, is I was gonna put another PVC pipe up here with little mesh pots, which are these things here, and have the hydroponic solution run through that and then trickle back in. And then I was gonna put my lettuce in this. Even though the pH of tomatoes and lettuce are kind of different, you can cope with it. So my lettuce currently is in the aquaponics section, which is obviously lots of fish because aquaponics is fish. And that is what my lettuce is looking like. So all this lettuce is actually due to be harvested. It should be a little bit more red, but we're not adding iron or any supplements to the water because we've got delicate fish like freshwater stingrays. Yes, it is. Aquaponics with freshwater stingrays. Who would have thought? <laughs> but this is all about to be harvested. But this lettuce here, which is not terribly going that well, well, it's actually not too bad because a lot of this got wiped out by rats and it's actually growing back. This is iceberg lettuce, not getting enough light. I have a high powered LED sitting above it, but it really needs more light. So I'm probably going to move that lettuce out of, the aqua, oh, out of the aquaponics and then back into hydroponics. Yeah, whether that works or not, I'm not entirely sure. I don't know if we're gonna shock the plants. We possibly will shock the plants, but the whole idea was to have it up the top there. But since I've decided, no, I'm just gonna to go to the crack key method of hydroponics, which is incredibly easy. It's a bucket like that cut a hole in the top and you just use one of these little mesh pots. Very, very simple. I do have some tomatoes around here in that same method. Now, there was a whole lot of these, but again, they got wiped out by mites, didn't they, Benji? Yes, they did. So this is the sole survivor. It is doing well now, it is perked up. We have our first lots of flowers with this awesome flowers so everything is working fine with that one that one was a little bit mangled same with that one those three did not survive well they were so dodgy I actually dumped them down the back we'll show you those because one of them ironically has now got tomatoes so go figure but very very simple method it's a bucket like that the hole the mesh pot and if we have a look in there a whole lot of roots now the good, that was a spider. <laughs> now the good thing with those is you don't need to keep it removing solution and stuff like that. You just fill it up. There's a little hole in the side, as you can see there. So for an overflow, so it doesn't completely drown the roots because you do need oxygen to the roots. And as the roots actually take up all that nutrients, the level goes down, obviously, and there's more oxygen to the roots very very easy method so we're going to set up a whole lot of those in the smaller buckets we've got for our lettuce aren't we benji yes we are but that's probably going to be in the next video so there we go i thought just do a quick video oh i have to show you the tomato plants down the back let's jump to that and welcome to the junk pile yes there is a junk pile look how mingy this plant is oh my god yeah it's sort of half survived the mite damage same with this one this one's looking obviously a lot better i don't have any of these you know attached to anything they're just lumped over but look we have a tomato isn't that ridiculous that is beyond ridiculous whether or not rats and mice get that who knows but this is just my dumping ground at the moment back to the hydroponics Anyway, it's just a quick video to show you how well they're going. They're actually going pretty good for, yeah, not overly knowing what to do and cheap stuff off eBay. And eventually we're gonna have lots of crops of tomatoes. I know, another thing that I am kind of keen on doing is putting them into a big area which is fully meshed over with rat and mouse mesh. So in summer and spring, I can have tomatoes growing and Pests are not going to completely wipe them out. Yeah, grasshoppers are not going to wipe them out because it's all those hidden little bugs and things that lay their eggs on stuff that completely decimate your crops. I know. And the whole idea is to not dump poison everywhere because if 
we're going to dump poison everywhere, we might as well just eat stuff from the supermarket because it's the same bloody difference, isn't it? Anyway, if you did enjoy this quick update on the Beto buckets and hydroponics and a little bit of aquaponics, click the thumbs up so I know. Got any comments or questions, comment down below because obviously I'm still learning as well. Yeah, nutrients, light, all sorts of stuff. Yeah, <laughs> it's hours of fun. Anyway, I'm going to drill holes in those. That'll be another little video if you want to show. Or if you want to see how the simple Craxy method works, we're going to do that now and rescue some lettuce. Anyway, see you in the next video.